So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video, and if you guys have been following the channel, you guys know that I've been playing around with a lot of different email clients, right? I've used Sparkmail, I've used the Gmail mail client, I've used Outlook, I use the web portal versions, I use the application versions, and it's mostly because I'm trying to find the best situation, I guess for me personally, right? So along came in Spike Mail, and Spike Mail kind of gives you the best of everything that I've had before, right? So when it comes to mail, it's been kind of you know, mail is known as being a very formal way of communication, especially if you're using it on the business side. You always want to have your signature, you want to make sure you're spelling everything grammatically correct, right? Again, it's a very formal kind of communication process. So what Spike did was like, they saw this and they're like, hey, it's a little too formal, it's not kind of fun to use, it makes it almost like a chore to go through email. So what they did is they kind of changed the entire mindset of what email should be, which is this conversational type of email. So basically it turns all your email threads and turns them into chats, which I thought was awesome. So what we're gonna do today is kind of go over the entire application, both on the iPad side, the Mac side, and kind of see if it's worth giving it a shot, especially if you are kind of looking for a new mail client out there. So without further ado, let's figure out what Spike is all about. So the first thing we wanna do is actually just get into the application itself. So if we go into Spike, what I wanna do is kinda of just walk you through the UI and exactly what it feels like to actually use, right? So we always start with the top left corner and the way it's broken down and the way Spike kinda of breaks down their inboxes is on two different things, right? You have priority and then you have the other. So what categorizes these two different inboxes is the priority is based on emails that require an action from you, right? So emails from physical people, from your team members, basically an email that requires you to do something with that email, whether it's respond to it or follow a link or something like that. And then you have the other, which is mostly marketing emails, maybe tracking information, promotional emails, so things that don't require your immediate attention. So that's kind of how they break it down. And again, I love the way it breaks this down because again, I can kind of just keep the priority email open and I know exactly what I need to do when I need to do it. Versus the other section is usually like 99% of the time it's stuff that I don't even need to read. So what makes Spike so unique is that what Spike did was they saw email and they saw that it was very a very formal process, a very formal way of communicating from either a personal or business standpoint. At the end of the day, when you email, you think a lot more about what you're saying, how you're saying it. So what they wanted to do was change all of that by making it more of a conversational inbox, a conversational email. So basically what it looks like, so for instance, I'm gonna pull this one up and you can see that this is an email thread, right? This is a thread of a normal email circumstance but it looks like a chat message, right? It looks like Facebook Messenger or iMessage or anything like that. And this is a conversation that started with a normal email thread. So it converts your old email history into this more chat-like text box. So you can kind of see that it just goes back and forth like a conversation instead of a long email thread. So, and this is an example of me messaging somebody that doesn't have Spike on the other end. So if I go to somebody that does have Spike, for instance, if I go here, you can see that it looks even more so like a chat box, right? So for instance, you have the little icons down here that show that it's an email that's been delivered and it's been seen and it's been taken an action on, right? And then there's also different aspects like a messenger which shows like, hey, it's been delivered, but it hasn't been seen yet. So that's when you see a little check mark instead of a little eyeball down here. So again, they're trying to bring more of an informal way of communicating, more fun, more collaborative way of communicating than, in, than it is with traditional email. Because I know firsthand, you know, being in sales and trying to do outreach and things like that, when you send emails out, you're thinking about how many times you message that person, right? How many times did I try to get some feedback from this person? And I think with something like Spike, psychologically, you're thinking it's a text message, it's a chat box, so you don't feel like as bad messaging somebody over and over again, which is part of the is part of like the biggest thing. It's like that psychological feeling as a salesperson of, hey, I'm bothering this person too much without actually getting anything in return. This is just kind of like you're I messaging them or you're shooting them a text which is so, so cool to see. And I've been loving this new, you know, the UI and this new form of making email just a little bit more approachable and less formal, more of an informal process. So now what I'm gonna show you is kind of just the ins and outs of the application itself, right? So you can see that it's taken on that 13.4 cursor support really nicely, really easily. You have all the different options that you would with any other email client, right? You can mark it as in red, star it. You can hit this so you can be reminded of this email at a later time, at a later date. So you can remember to take an action on it tomorrow or the next day. You can continue on through here. You can archive it, trash it. You can then go into details and settings. And if the person has Spike, which this person does, you actually have the ability to video call and audio call them 
directly from the application, which is so, so cool to have. I mean, I know that a lot of applications currently do that, but I just love that it's in here and it knows that you're a Spike user and then you can just have a team call or a one-on-one -on -one call, a video call. You don't have to leave the application for that. And then if you go down here, if you wanna answer the email, that's where you're gonna answer the email, down here on this thread. But the beautiful thing is if you want a, if you want a more traditional looking window, you just hit this button right here and you're back into typing in a message like you would on a traditional inbox or traditional email style. And you can even choose to reply from which email you want because you do have a unified email in here, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. So that is kind of the UI in a nutshell, right? So what I do want to talk about now is that the fact that you can have multiple accounts in here, right? So as you can see, I have two personal accounts. And the way the pricing works with Spike is if you use a personal account, it's free to use, right? There is a little bit of limitation on how much storage you have and the size of files that you can send over and things like that, but nothing too crazy. And again, it's totally free for you to try out and use. And then if you do want to get into more of a business account, like if you have an email with your own domain because you have your own company or something like that, then there's some plans that you have to get into. But again, they go from anywhere from eight to $16. So it's not that crazy of a pricing, especially for everything that you get. So I like to view all my stuff in a unified account just so I know exactly what's going on. And what I'm going to do now is show you guys how to go through the messages and delete them and things like that. So the best thing that they've added in here is this filter button. So normally if you see a filter button on an email client, you have to decide what filter you want to do. But with this one, it's just an automatic unread filter. So you can see that I have a couple of unread messages. What I want to do is actually delete multiple of them at the same time. So to do that, and then you press this little check mark right here, which is nice and small, you hold it down. And then all you have to do is press this little delete button. And just like that, they're deleted. So if I want to get out of here, and I'm all good to go. And then one other thing that I do want to show you is if I click on this one and I click on the delete button, right, which is right here, you see now it says trash all messages, which is two, right? I only clicked on one of them. So basically what it does is if you get multiple emails from the same domain, even if they are marketing emails or newsletters or anything like that, it groups them into one email chain. And then if you press on delete, if you want to delete one of them, it's going to ask you if you want to delete them all. So for instance, I'm going to delete all of these, good to go and I'm done. So that is the email feature, that is the UI, that's how you kind of navigate through Spike. And so far it's been awesome. I've been loving Spike, but some of the things that kind of set Spike apart is, again, they want to be very conversational, very collaborative. So what they've added, right, is a notes and a task section. So the next thing we're going to talk about is this task section. So if I go into task, open up the task section, you can see that I was planning my video for this right here, right now. And what's awesome about it is that they're not trying to replace collaboration software. Like they're not trying to be Google Docs or they're not trying to be anybody else that does those things. What they're trying to do is just make it a little bit easier and have a nice to have feature in there. So for instance, if you use this on a business perspective, you have a team of five to 10 people uh, all using Spike and they're putting together a project plan or something like that, you just create a task or a note section for that team in order to share in real time. So you can see that I'm on the iPad right here, but on my Mac, which is right behind me, if I, like, if I start typing, you can see that in real time, it's showing that I'm editing those notes. So it works just like Google Docs, but what I like is that it's not making you leave the application to do something that you could do within the application. So again, I don't think it's meant to replace anything. It's there to supplement your current you know, workflow. So for instance, being able to move the needle on a project plan or a project or anything like that within the same application will means that there's less friction in moving and getting stuff done. So for instance, you get this note, all these tasks done, and then you go to the application that you need to. So I just like how it's kind of built into here. And the, this is just a task section. So if I want to go into the actual notes section, I even think that's a little bit more robust as well. So this is a cool template that's been created and it's not just for text, right? It's not just a text editor. You can put text, you can put GIFs or GIFs, however you guys call them. You can throw links in here, do to-do lists, throw little charts and tables on here, have actual saved documents. So there's a Google doc right here and a PDF here that anybody can open. And then finally you can embed video, which is a beautiful thing to have. So again, for instance, let's say you, hire a whole new team of 10 people. This can be like their onboarding sheet, right? This can be where you set everything up for them to view, to collaborate on, to kind of see exactly what they need to do on their first week or something like that. So there's a bunch of different applications that you can use something like this for. And again, I don't think it's there to replace anything. That's there to kind of supplement and help your workflow process at the end of the day. And then a couple more things that I did want to show off a little bit. So you can link your Google Drive, your Outlook, your Dropbox. You can connect to those drives, those cloud drives, and then use those files within Spike and kind of email directly from Spike. And then if you go into your settings, this is one thing that people did ask me and that I was actually curious about, right? Because the idea is to be as informal as possible or you know, make it easier to use, more fun to use. But sometimes when you do reach out to people, it needs to be professional. You need to have your company signature and things like that. So very easy to add, just go into your actual email, go to the, pick the one that you want, 
add your signature right in here and that's what you'll see. And then of course you do have the ability to change it to a more classic inbox based on subject and person. So you, this is the different organized conversations that you can organize by. You can change the theme and right now it's the theme setting is based on whatever my device is doing so that's good to go. And then you can even require touch ID or face ID if need be so that's beautiful to see. And then you do have calendar syncing as well so I mean it's a again it's pretty much everything that you would need in an email client and for the most part it's free you know for a personal for personal use purposes it's freebie and then also you can create groups so if you need to create a group on a personal basis to like plan a party or something collaborate in real time from there and then finally you have your contacts which you can start an audio or video call like I mentioned before so that is spike in a nutshell and then the very last thing I'm going to show off is I want to show you what it's like if somebody that's using spike sends an email to somebody that doesn't use spike so let's pull up my Gmail, right? Let's pull it up right here. You can see that I have a thread with somebody who was, who was using Spike and me, which was using the web version of Gmail. So you can see that it just looks like a normal email thread, right? Like a back and forth, normal email thread. But to the person using Spike, it's a chat conversation. But to me, it's an email conversation. So you can see that it's, like I think the best, best way to describe Spike is just that it's easier to use, it's more fun to use, it's more welcoming, more approachable, just because it's something that we're so used to from a chat perspective. So overall, I've been loving Spike nothing to complain about everything happens quickly if anything i get push notifications quicker on spike than i do like on the normal mail client on spark on any of those other uh, mail clients that have been used in the past so overall it gets my recommendation i'll have a link below if you guys want to try it out but let's get out of this view and go to the normal view so that's pretty much what we do for this video everybody like i mentioned spike I, I think the main reason spike is around is to kind of change that stigma that email needs to be super formal the entire time and it can't really be a collaborative process with email so Spike kind of turned everything into more of an informal messaging or chat type of thread versus, again, a more professional, formal process of having to reach out. So especially if you're in sales and you're doing outreach, you know, you think about how many messages you send to somebody via email before getting a response. And again, that's usually a deterrent and it shouldn't really matter on the sales side. If you reach out to somebody 10 times and get no response or one time and get no response, it's the same thing. So with Spike, it kind of gets rid of that stigma that like, hey, I'm just sending them a chat message as opposed to I'm emailing them formally every single day to get some sort of response back. So I think Spike has been awesome for that. It makes email a little bit more fun again. And overall, just I think it's worth a shot. So if you guys want to try it out, I'll leave it a link in the description down below. Again, it works on your iPhone, your iPad. It works on Mac OS. They have web portal versions as well. So if you're on the Windows side, give it a shot too. Android, also an application. So overall, Spike has just been awesome to use. A nice little breath of fresh air when it comes to email again. It's just making email more fun and collaborative. And again, all those other features like the task management and the collaborative notes, those are all just pluses on top of how they've rearranged and redone what email should be. So definitely give Spike a shot. Again, it's linked down below. If you guys have any questions or comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'll be down there kind of answering some questions, trying to help people out. But again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.